Hello, dear ones, it's Alice. I'm of the stars. Um, I want to try to explain something about a way of thinking that results in wrong action. Um, sometimes people look at the very external, most obvious part of reality, which has to do with the physical body, and they want to improve a behavior and so they make a change in the physical body and they think that that change in the physical body will result in a change in behavior. It might be a very radical change. Um, I'll give three instances that I've given before in various blogs. For instance, suppose there's a spiritual teacher who has this mistaken notion. I call it a heresy, but I'm into heresies these days. It's, it's a heresy of the of the physical form. Now, we have many other um, forms besides the physical. We have the subtle bodies. We go in energy stature, we go all the way up to the monad, which is like gigantic as I understand it. So, so there's that understanding as a spiritual teacher that, that we strive to attain. But sometimes on the spiritual path, a spiritual teacher will we'll look to the obvious, the very obvious, the physical form of his students. So when that happens, these kinds of things might happen. He might have a student who's, who's too active, he feels, sexually to pursue the physical path. And if that student is out all the time doing that Don Juan thing, statyriasis, or uh, that other thing, uh, that nymphomania, right, if it's a woman, then uh, after a time, this, this s s spiritual teacher who abides in the heresy of which I speak, the physical form heresy, might decide that the thing to do is to cut off the genitals, uh, mutilate the genitals of the person involved. You could think of it in the terms of the subconscious metaphor as the in and out the in and out metaphor. So, so the student was uh, acting out the in and out metaphor over and over again, and then the teacher arranges to have the the genitals uh, that castrated, and expects that the behavior will change. But what in fact happens, apparently, judging from the astral stories, is that. The subconscious metaphor of in and out translates itself to the to the man with a knife, and who goes out and will, instead of having sex and and um, presses the knife in and out of a person, um, symbolically representing the act of sex, only killing the person instead. So the outcome anticipated by the spiritual teacher is is quite the opposite of what he expects. The outcome is far worse rather than far better. That's one example. Here's another. A spiritual teacher has a student. And now, I would like you to know that I'm not a spiritual teacher and I don't have any students, so don't look at me. This is just astral stories here. <laughs> Quite interesting astral stories. Uh, but they do help define the realm of heresy. So, in this case, a spiritual teacher has a spiritual student who, uh, who is into, into killing. Syria just loves killing. It might be that same person, you know, so maybe the prior mistake already happened. And, um, or another person who is very into serial killing. And the teacher thinks, well, this is a bad thing. This is bad for the spiritual development of the student. What can I do about it? And, and in looking at the physical form of the student, he decides that what causes the act of, of murder is an increase in the heart rate of the student. He thinks that because the student's heart rate accelerates when he is about to commit the act of murder. So, so the teacher thinks the thing to do is to install a pacemaker in the heart of the student so that the student's heart can't, rate can't go up high enough to allow him to commit murder. 
And so in that case, at least in my Astro story, what happened was that the student who had the pacemaker inserted, actually by his wife, uh, in a home in a home operation with a spiritual teacher and standing at his head. This was a vision I had. Um, um, the wife, after the operation, the wife did the operation. Then after the pacemaker was installed, she offered too much narcotics as a like a, a painkiller, and the the, the uh, student went out of body and passed on. That's what the story was. Or else went unconscious because of the operation. I'm not sure which. As to whether he then continued to kill if he was in form, uh, perhaps less so. Perhaps it was uh, Perhaps it was helpful in this instance, the physical detention. You know, they say that in law enforcement these days, if someone... Uh, performs, uh, say, sexual molestation and is accused of that and found guilty, or various other crimes uh, that they, what they do is they put um, a physical restraint on the person, uh, like a, um, it's like a, an anklet, or I, I think, that uh, it, it indicates where that person is, it certain times like maybe it's the weekends so that they're supposed to be at home during the weekends in order to get out of jail and so they use that kind of physical restraint to to mitigate the antisocial behavior of some people that have been shown to be habitual offenders in the sexual molestation realm and uh, I think that has some success and it's certainly saves the state money, but I've also heard on the astral plane of people who shave off their ankle bones so that they can slip that off and, and get away from the, um, the detection system. So, so that has, and those people that do that, uh, if I were in law enforcement, I would ask what it is about them, what kind of mental, uh, tangles they may have that'll, that allow them to mutilate their body in this way so as to continue with this, this habit that is, you know, antisocial and detrimental to their welfare in the long run. So, so maybe that's where the pacemaker idea came from, from an idea about um, physical restraint systems used by law enforcement. It would be another way of physical restraint. Um, if the patient didn't die in the process. And if the patient did die in the process, then that would indicate to me that that his need to kill was uh, more important to him than being alive, so that if he were to be restrained from it, he would feel he had no purpose in living. Um, and in the case of the person that shaves down their ankle so, to, so as to get loose of the, the law enforcement restraint system, I'd say that the desire... The desire to to perform that antisocial action was more important to them to, than their physical form. So you get begin to get the notion that there is something other than the physical form at play here, right? There are the emotions, for instance, and the thoughts, the habitual thoughts of the person in question. These are two of the subtle bodies, the uh, emotional body or astral form and the mental body, the higher mental body. So, 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 so even the habitual offender knows in a way that there's more to him than the physical and, and leaps beyond the, the heresy, the her heretical thought of the, um, of the spiritual teacher. I have one other instance for you. This instance has to do with felons, with a spiritual teacher who has as his students felons, uh, who who have you know in their um, rap sheet um, uh, clear evidence of, of a habitual life of crime, the career criminal, and all kinds of crime. It might be, you know, drug runner or. Um, it might be sex worker, it might be, you know, 
armed burglary and just all these different things that, that people do when they don't think too much about the, the consequences of their actions. Um, and so this spiritual teacher has in his, under his care, under his aegis, uh, uh, felons, right? And he, and he is working under the assumption that the physical form is the important thing. All these felons are men, let's say. And he thinks to himself, women, women have a maternal drive. And they would never do things like that generally. It's always men that seem to be caught with these kinds of um, risk-taking behaviors, almost always. Maybe 10% women and 90% men are, are along those lines. And so this spiritual teacher thinks, well, if they were only women. And so uh, with that line of heretical thought, he performs on them transgender operations. And the result of that is that if they are unable to achieve an erection, I've spoken of this several times in the past because it's very important to understand it. It's important for the welfare of society and also of the people involved. If, if they're unable to achieve orgasm after that, then they will ratchet up on, on serial killing, maybe once a week, maybe more often. And this is very detrimental to, to their own soul, um, to their soul clearing and also to the welfare of the community in which they do this. So uh, they, uh, under those circumstances, they look like women. They have the physical form of women, but, but in their um, emotional and mental bodies, they still retain the samskaras that they had before that were very violent. And, and, a, and they also have the understanding, the male understanding of a lifetime of of being male rather than female that, that must be overcome, be, you see. So just that. I, I hope that each of you can undertake an, a study of the subtle bodies so as to understand more thoroughly the miracle of the, the beingness that you really are. You know? And from that, proceed down from the spirit, from the highest, from the monad down into the physical. And in that way, the decisions that you make about clearing your soul will be more effective. And same goes for spiritual teachers and their help for their spiritual students, I feel.